Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Daniel from Dole Deer Media and today I'm going to be talking about things that you need to buy to get started as a respiratory therapist. This does apply to other medical careers, but I'm going to be focused primarily on respiratory therapy. So I will have Amazon links to the things that I'm recommending. These are things that I myself use every single day and I'm going to recommend them to you because I think they're going to be a great benefit to you. So the first thing I'm going to recommend is going to be shoes. Now shoes are probably the most important thing that you could wear as an RT and it's probably the most important thing on this list. A lot of people when they get into this field, they completely neglect the shoes that they buy and oftentimes you'll see somebody buying a $20 pair of shoes and you're like, what are you doing? That's not gonna help you out. Now, the reason why it's bad to buy a cheap pair of shoes is that after a few days of walking, your legs are gonna start hurting, your feet are gonna start hurting, and your back is gonna start hurting. After a few years of walking on bad shoes, that's gonna have a huge effect on your health and it's gonna have a huge effect on even your mental status, how alert you are, how happy you are. So I recommend getting a good pair of shoes. Now, one thing that people neglect to consider when getting shoes is that you're only getting shoes for about half a year to a year now everybody has a different number but on average uh, shoes get worn out after about 300 to 500 miles now if you do the math on average people in the hospital are walking about five to ten thousand steps uh, a day which is depending on how tall you are it could be anywhere from three miles all the way up to five six miles so if you're walking five, six miles a day, you only have about a hundred days of walking in those shoes. Obviously it depends on everybody's weight and how hard you walk and everything else like that, but your shoes do get worn out. The soles are only meant to last so long. So with that being said, focus on the shoes that you're gonna get. Now I recommend getting some Hoka's. I recently bought these and honestly it's been like walking on a cloud every single day at work. Any shoes that you buy that you have the intention of getting them for support, you're probably gonna have a good shot of getting some good ones. But my personal recommendation is getting some good Hoka's. Next thing you're gonna need as an RT is gonna be a good stethoscope. Honestly, this goes for any medical profession where you're listening to people's heart, lungs. Either way, with a good stethoscope, what you're gonna wanna look at is the $100 price range. I am gonna have a link down below for not only the stethoscope that I like to use, but all the other things that I'm recommending. Now with the good stethoscope, it honestly doesn't really matter at this point. If you're spending anywhere over $50, it's probably gonna be a pretty decent stethoscope. Now the stethoscope that I'm recommending, I personally like it because it has like a matte finish to it, and I like the way it feels around my neck when I'm wearing it. I feel comfortable when I listen to people's breath sounds. I have a really good uh, like audible range on the actual stethoscope. It's not really quiet or diminished. Um, like some of the cheap ones and also some of the ones that you get for free, the disposable ones, pretty much everybody's gonna sound pretty diminished. They have a really bad range of, uh, of sounds. So I definitely recommend getting a good stethoscope. Do your research. There's even some cool stethoscopes that you can actually amplify the audio. Yeah, they're electronic and you can increase what you hear and what you don't hear. So that's a really cool thing. If you need that, I think it's a little overkill but it all depends on how bad your hearing is and also how important that it is for you to hear exactly every breath sound that you hear or if you're a doctor to hear the cardiac sounds that you need to listen to. Next thing I recommend is gonna be a pole sox. Now for the most part, you're probably not gonna need a pole sox in the hospital. I like to have one just in case. Sometimes you're really busy and you don't have enough time to set up a machine or put on a new thing, go to the supply closet and get everything you need. And you can get a pretty good pole sox for about 20 to $30. Honestly, the more expensive it is, it doesn't really make it better in this situation. With other things, price does matter. With, with pole sox emitters, I wouldn't say that the price matters too much. I've used $10 ones and I've used $50 ones. They all work the same. I think the only difference is it's a little more gimmicky. Uh, you'll have like a, a waveform on the more expensive one or they'll have a little bit more things displayed that really don't necessarily matter. You're using a pulse ox for a heart rate, also for SpO2. That's kind of all it's there for. So I have one link down below, but any pulse ox you get is gonna be good. I also recommend 
recommending pulse oximeters to people especially with this pandemic that's going on i've had to recommend a lot of pulse oximeters to people so have a pulse ox that you like and have one that's available that you might need to give to someone or if you don't give it to someone at least to have the ability to recommend that pulse ox to someone it is something that could potentially save their life next thing i recommend you buying to get started in the medical field especially as an rt is going to be a uv light sanitizer now me and my wife purchased this about a year ago maybe two years ago when the pandemic started uv light is known to kill pretty much most bacteria and viruses that exist especially when something's exposed to the light for a long period of time then it definitely kills mostly everything that's in there so me and my wife when we come home from work we like to put our phone our watches our stethoscope or anything else that came in contact to patients or patient rooms we like to do a little quick sanitation before we actually put it away it works wonderfully and it helps me feel better at home because sometimes you come home and you're just like i've been exposed to blood and everything else and having that sanitizer really does help a lot there's one that I'm recommending that I'm gonna link down below. It's about $130. It's a pretty good one that you could fit a lot of things into. Also, it's pretty good for the home if you have any kids, you can sanitize any of their toys or things that fall on the ground like pacifiers. This is something that's a must in the 21st century. I don't know how we've been living without it for this long. Next thing I recommend, and I'm just gonna link any watch down below, but I recommend just a watch that has a second hand on it. I personally have an Apple Watch. I absolutely love the Apple Watch. If you can afford one, get an Apple Watch or some kind of other smart watch. They do a lot more than just uh, the typical, you know, time reading. So that's a plus. But with watches, you need to get a watch that's a, that has a second hand. That's the most important thing that you're gonna need. So if you have like a pediatric kid or like a little baby come into the hospital, into the emergency room, you're gonna not wanna just count 15 seconds or uh, 30 seconds like a lot of times you do when you're with adults that are pretty stable. But with kids, you wanna utilize all 60 seconds of that clock. You wanna make sure that you're counting every single breath sound. Also, there's a lot of times when you have adults that are breathing irregularly. You can't just do a calculation. I know in school they, they tell you that, yeah, there's a little quick way, just count to 15 seconds or, or even in your head or something simple like that, and then just multiply by four. But a lot of times there's no clock in the room, and oftentimes, if you're just counting in your head, you're gonna mess up. So get a watch that has a second hand on it and it's gonna help you a lot. It's gonna make you a better therapist and it's gonna make you a better nurse if that's what you're going for. Next thing I recommend is getting a badge reel and badge reels are pretty wonderful because it helps you from having to bend over or having to kind of like hug the wall every single time you're trying to get into a room. This is something that I'm surprised most hospitals don't automatically just give to you, but a lot of places I worked at, they didn't give that to you. They just kind of gave you the clip, old school looking one. And the badge drill has saved me a lot from having to bend over and hurting my back. Uh, over a course of a day, you're probably gonna use your badge maybe 50 to 100 times, if not any more. Getting into med rooms, getting into your department, getting into other places like supply closets. And that reel is gonna help you out a lot. I recommend getting like a, a pack of 10 of them or five of them. I'm gonna have a link down below to one that I think is really good or you can get something more personal. I have one that has a Bears logo on it. I absolutely love it. That's my team, go Bears. So either way, a reel is definitely a, a must if you're gonna start working as an RT. The next thing I recommend is getting a pen. I recommend getting as many pens as you can, 500 of them, 1,000 of them if you need to. You're gonna lose a lot of pens or people are gonna steal them. I think people steal them. I've seen people with my pens before. I know who you are if you're watching my video. So I know who stole my pen. Either way, you're gonna have a lot of your pens stolen uh, during the course of the day. There are some times where you're gonna have to uh, chart in a patient's room or quickly jot something down. You put it down, you run away, come back and your pen is gone. So I recommend getting a pack of a lot of pens. Now in terms of what a pen, you, what kind of pen you should get, I personally just don't like any pen that leaks, especially if you're on the go, let's say you're in the ED and something happens and you have to quickly jot something down. There's been times where I quickly jotted something down close my brain, come back, and it's all smeared, and I can't even tell what the numbers were in the first place. So the pen I'm gonna recommend is a really fine point one. I absolutely love it, because uh, I like writing small, and it's super easy and doesn't smear anything like that. But a good pen that doesn't smear, and having a few of them in your car, a few of them at work, and a few of them at home, 
that's pretty much a must. And finally, I'll say that the most important thing after your shoes is having some form of like a hydro flask or some form of water drink container thing. I don't know what they're called. What is that, like a thermos? Having something that you can drink a lot of water with you're running a lot, you're losing a lot of electrolytes, you're losing a lot of fluids, and at times you don't even feel thirsty. So having that little hydro flask or whatever it is, is gonna remind you that you need a drink. You're probably gonna need to go through one of those every shift, if not having to refill that during your shift, but it's definitely something that's a must. Dehydration is something that happens a lot at work and you don't even realize it. And honestly, after a while of being dehydrated, let's say you're working on your third or fourth day in a row, you're gonna start getting the effects of the dehydration on top of your sleep and on top of everything else. And it's gonna really affect how you work. So staying hydrated is really important and that's why I'm ending with some kind of a water container drink, like a hydro flask doesn't have to be that expensive thank you guys for watching like i said the links are down below in the description let me know if there's anything i missed and let me know if these things actually did help you out have a great day guys